Hello and welcome back to Acrylic Code. Today's tutorial is going to be a little different. We're going to learn how to use a new software called Synesthesia. Synesthesia is a plug and play software to create audio reactive generative visuals. Before we move on, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. We also launched our Patreon a while ago with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link to the Patreon in the comments for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. With synesthesia you can do a lot of crazy looking things and with minimal effort and it can also be customized. This is the official website, I'll put the link in the description so you can download it for free and check it out yourself. If you want more in-depth information and videos you can also check out their YouTube channel. The link for this will also be in the description. What I'll also be using as a kind of virtual audio interface will be Black Hole. This will help me route the audio to synesthesia, in my case from epidemic music, but this could also be YouTube, Spotify or any other music streaming service. Once you've downloaded and installed Black Hole, we need to configure it properly to ensure that it will work with synesthesia. First, let's open Audio MIDI Setup. In here, we'll click on the little plus sign and then we'll go to Create Multi-Output Device. Let's double click to rename it to Synesthesia. In here, and select the Multi Out, and we'll select the Black Hole 2 channels as well as the MacBook Pro speakers or your computer's internal speakers. In case you have any other speakers here that you want to be outputting the sound, go ahead and select them as well. So, what we've done now is we've created an audio device that outputs the sound to Black Hole and the speakers. We're almost done here. For the last step, we need to let our system know that it needs to route the audio system to this audio device. For this, we open the sound settings. Go to Output and set the output to Synesthesia. So like this, we are causing the general sound system to get outputted to Synesthesia. This, on the other hand, outputs the sound to Black Hole and the speakers. In this way, we can listen to the music and simultaneously route the music to Black Hole and the software. Ok, now let's start. Once you've downloaded and installed both Synesthesia and the Black Hole and configured everything, go ahead and open Synesthesia and this is what we'll see at the first glance. We notice here that the volume is colored red and by default it uses the microphone of your computer as input audio device. Let's select here Black Hole as the input instead. And now every sound we're playing is going to get caught by Black Hole and routed as input in Synesthesia. Hopefully that makes sense. Now if I go back and start playing some music on my streaming service, it will get routed to our software and it's already audio reactive. Let's go to the control panel, which is on the top left corner, and we'll get started on our visuals. I recommend you first go through this part here, which has many audio reactive visuals out of the box, so that you can get an idea what's already available. So here we have the playlist and on the left part we have the media, the meta controls and the scene controls. The media is useful if we want to add our own images or videos and mix them with the visuals we already have. The meta controls are general controls for all your scenes and the scene controls are specific controls that apply to one scene. In the scene controls we have many possibilities, like the object effects will apply to the object in our scene, which is the ball. So we see by increasing or decreasing the size parameter we will change the size of the ball. Then we can add other effects to the movement. For instance, let's see what happens when we select the electrify effect. We can also change the lightning of the scene by changing the parameters or toggling on the shading or the fog. The scene controls can be applied to each of the scenes that are available, but for every scene we're going to have different effects and parameters, based on the elements of the scene. I suggest you go through and explore all the possibilities in here on your own to get an idea and some inspiration. But we also want to learn how to customize and create our own playlists. 
We see here on this bar next to the playlist, we also have the palette. For both the playlist and the palette, we have a perform and an edit mode. Let's go to the edit tab and I'm going to create a new playlist and call it tutorial. Now I have an empty playlist and I need to fill this with scenes. Let's follow the instructions and click on this icon here, which is the scenes library. Now we see here a bunch of available scenes, which we can display if we click on them once. Then, once you've decided on the scene you like, you click on this little plus icon on the top right and the scene will get added to your new playlist. You can keep doing this until you're satisfied with all the scenes in your playlist. Once you're done with the base, you can now start customizing your playlist. For this, we go to the control panel, select the scene you want to modify, and then play around with the parameters and the effects. So I'll toggle the electrify effect, decrease the fade to color, and increase the size. Now that I have all these, I want to create a preset. We'll see in a minute why this is important. So first I'll go to the palette, then edit mode, and I'll create a new preset and call it my preset. And I have my new preset. Let's go back to the playlist and here we see if I select another scene and then go back to the globe, we'll notice that the effects were not saved and instead we now have the default state we had before we made all the changes. To avoid this, first we make sure that we're in edit mode, then we click right under the name where it says default, and then we select my preset. And this will do the trick. So let's see if I click on another scene and then go back to the globe, we see that my preset has been set as the default. And this is important because we want to have our customized scenes every time we trigger a new scene. Now, another issue we might have here is in case we change our mind and want to change a parameter or an effect after we've done this whole process. For example, we want the ball to be smaller after all. And what we do is go back to the presets and right under scene we click on the update option and this will update and save the changes we took. So just with this little knowledge we already hold a lot of power. We know how to create our scenes, customize and save them and also we know how to create our presets. Now let's say I'm done with this preset and I'm going to just change a couple of effects on this scene and save this on another preset. So then we just go to the palette and create a new preset. I'll just call this my preset 2. So now we have two presets and I want to be able to easily change between them. To do this we go here to the top and in here we can also save the presets. We see in the first slot we have the default. If we click on the plus icon, we can select here the first preset and we can repeat the same for the second slot and select here the second preset. And now all we need to do is click on the preset we want to display and just as easy as that, we can seamlessly switch between them. In here, we also notice a MIDI tab. So if you have a MIDI controller, you can MIDI map the presets or the previous and next buttons here to switch from one preset to the other. Not only this, but you can also map any of the other effects or parameters you want and change their values with the media controller. Great, so now we know how we can create new playlists, how we can add scenes to the playlists, play around with the control values, we can add them to new presets, and we can set here the presets we've created. But sometimes you want to change up a scene very fast. To do this, you can click here on the random option and the scene will change into a random new state. If you want to go back to how it was before, just click on default. This is a very useful option and also a lot of fun. But since it is random, you need to know that sometimes, like in this case, the scene might go completely black. And this happens because the new random lighting value is too low. To avoid cases like this, it's possible for us to use the random option and emit specific effects. 
So let's say I want to get new random scenes, but I want to keep the lightning constant. Then what I do is I click on the specific effect, in this case the lightning, and I'll know it's selected because the letters are bold. And then I'll press L on the keyboard to lock the lightning. From here now I can go to random and the lightning will not change. You can do this for as many effects as you like. On the other hand, if you want to keep everything the same and only randomize one single parameter, then we select a specific parameter, let's say here the size, and then every time I press R on the keyboard, we get a new random value for the size only. If I want to go back to where I started, I press D and it will go back to the default state. So until now we have L for locking, D to go back to the default state and R to randomize one parameter only. Let's see another useful command here. If I go to one of the scenes of my presets, the size value here of 1.68 is the default state of the scene. I want to change this value to 0.91 and then I go to preset and update this value so the value is fixed. Now I have two values saved, the global default and the preset default. And if I want to go to the default value of 1.68, I press D and if I want the preset size back of 0.91, I press P. Great, I think this was the essential introductory information on Synesthesia. We got to know the interface and with very basic and straightforward commands, you can create very entertaining visuals. I hope you got something useful out of this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments how you like the software. We're going to make a couple more videos on Synesthesia since it also offers some more complex functionalities. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and thank you to our patrons for all the support. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and I will see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!